Hello, everybody. Welcome to CF 2.0 Geek Out. We have me, Susan, Andrea on this side Hello. of our screen, Dan Havey joining us today. Um, we're going to continue the conversation uh, that we started last week with brand styles. We talked a lot about uh, creating a brand style guide, both for just general purposes of your business, but then how that gets used in CF 2.0. What are the things that you're going to be able to set in the new feature that we have not previously had in ClickFunnels, but will have in 2.0 um, of being able to create a style in your account, which just automatically gets applied to all the pages that you create, which is really, really cool. Um, probably my favorite thing that I have seen so far. <laughs> so... Today, we're going to continue that conversation and talk about like, okay, if I'm wanting my page <clears throat> to have a certain look to it, some of that, it, it's not um, natively in the ClickFunnels um, 1.0. Uh, you're not able to just do some of those things that we're, we're wanting to do a lot of the times. And so we have to use some CSS code. Um, but what we want to talk about today is like, okay, some of those cool things that we like to do in 1.0. Is it going to be easier in 2.0? Are we still going to have to use code in 2.0? Or are they building features in and settings in that's going to make that um, just easy for everyone to do without code? So mm -hmm. um, did I sum all that up <laughs> to everyone's you satisfaction? Did. You did, yes. Okay. I think you did a great job. <laughs> all right. I'm going to keep my eye on the comments. Um, we have... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, if you're here, say hello. We have Charmin. I'm, I apologize if I'm saying your name wrong, but welcome. Ha glad to have you here. Um, all right. So I know we're going to do some screen sharing and <clears throat> I guess. Do you do I need to share my screen again? Um, I was going to say like, okay, I actually want to do like a quick. <clears throat> Let me share my screen really Pressure. quick. Yeah, yeah. Refresh I'm gonna. Yeah, I think that's I'm gonna a good go. Idea. Yeah, because a lot uh, last week I was showing a lot of one of my clients' page, and there were some cool things on there that even Dan was in the comments like teasing, like how do we do that? Like full well knowing how we do it, but <laughs> um, uh, I have so no I'm idea just, how you did. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show that again, and let me make sure I have it up, and then we can talk about like, okay, how do we do these things? Um. And again, just a quick reminder, we can't show you the back end of 2.0, but we're going to do our best to just tell you what it what we're seeing. Um, but we can show you um, the front end. And also we'll talk about 1.0 as well. So, all right, let me share this. <clears throat> you guys should be able to see that now. Yeah, yeah okay, really making sure. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this page and point out some things that I needed to kind of custom with CSS code on this page. And then maybe we can talk about like, okay, how are we accomplishing that? And then what is 2.0 gonna look like? And then anything that I don't point out, we can talk about after, does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, okay. All, right, all right, all right. Now, just, okay. to, just to point out to people and to be clear, this is built on 1.0, not on 2.0. Yes, 2 yes. Okay. thank you, Dan. This is 1.0, we cannot build funnels on 2.0 yet anyway. Um, Okay, so things that required CSS to make happen. Well, first of all, this this whole thing right here is already bold. So in, out of the box natively in the settings of ClickFunnels 1.0, you can do like a separate color for your bold versus a, a different color for your non-bold. So you have your regular font weight color and then you have your bold font weight color but you can see like all of this is bold so I had to use some code to make this happen to make this word a separate color and then I and then this also is obviously a different color different font so those are two things now my first um, question would be yes. is that font that you're using there for the general um, mm -hmm. is that a built-in font in ClickFunnels or is that a custom font you put in it is a custom font that I loaded in Okay. To, yeah. So yeah. in order to put in a custom font in 1.0, you have to go out and you have to find a font file of some sort, which then basically gives the definition. It's an external, it's an external link. It'll go out, it'll grab that definition, it'll pull it in on page load, and then you'll be able to put the font on your screen using the font family property in CSS. 
Now there's three or four different ways of doing it. So we're not going to go into that right now. I have like three videos already shot on how to do it because whether it's an Adobe font or it's a typeface font or something else, you, you do them differently. And in each case, you can usually do it two different ways. One where you put in the header code, one where you put into the CSS. So it's, it's kind of complicated in 2.0, they may, we don't know yet for sure, but it appears as though you're going to be able to just upload your font files into 2.0 and then be able to use them on the fly. But we're not sure about that yet, which that would really be something cool because fonts are really a pain in the ass to work with. They are. They are. Yeah. <laughs> now, a couple more questions I have. So like the word profitable, how did you get that to be okay. a different color when everything is already bold? Right. And I don't know. Do you think it would be a good idea for me to just open up this page, uh, editor? Yeah, you can. Okay. Let me, I'm pulling it up. Not top secret. I've shown this trick. <laughs> I've shown this trick to a lot of people. Time, time wise, I'm like, this is, should I just go into this? <laughs> well, I can, okay. I can tell well, you how to basically, do Basically, yeah. I was going to say, what I used is probably, I don't know, there might be another way, but I used the strike, the strike, right. uh, well, I don't even know what that's called. You know, when you put a strike through your word, um, it's, a, it's a text decoration, is what yes, it is. Yes, thank a, you. Yeah, it's a CSS text decoration property. Yeah. But what so it is, is you, so you go in there and just like you would, you're going to italicize it or whatever, you highlight it, you say strike through. Then you go into the CSS code and you specifically identify that part of that element that has a strike through it. And then you say, okay, change the color. And then because it's got the strike through it, you got to get rid of that. So you just say text decoration of none and it takes out the strike. And then it just leaves it there. It is perfect. So it's basically it's two lines of CSS in order to be able to do that. So you can make it any color you want, or as you can see down further, she made it a different font even. Mm -hmm. So where yeah. it says quit right there, that's a different font family. So again, the same thing, you put the strike through it, then you say font family or whatever. Well, I guess in this case here, you can't do the strike twice. Well, actually you could do the strike twice. You could yeah, do the strike twice, you. and then you'd have to do first of type and then second of type, or you know, first of type one, first a uh, second or whatever. Whatever, it's a, it's a, it's a pseudo class that you have to there use. This might look messy, yeah. I'm not a coder. But yeah. I have basically, I have a few of these happening on this page. So one of them is just for these two elements, I have it just changing the font family. This one, actually, no, that's not a strike through. Hold on, this one. Well, the top this, one there, line 17 through 19, that's just setting the font on yeah. a text element. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here's 21 the, here's the through 23 is where she put a strike in there. And then she changed the text decorate was well, the text decoration of none. Then she changed the color, mm -hmm. and then below here is where, yeah, yeah, font, below yeah, there is where color. you change the font family, yeah, yeah. And, and so I've color. got that happening. So yeah. yeah, it's just two different bits of code there. And oh, you, you must use two different you, headlines. You must use two different headlines. Yeah, because there's different he there's different element. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. well that makes sense if you use two different headline elements uh, to make up that one singular looking headline, then you don't have to There's deal with three, any right? pseudo classes. Yeah, you see yeah, here. So you got two different headlines. Okay, that makes that's a lot that's easier. That's why you're confused. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus well, you need a too. different line height anyway for that bottom one in order to get the word quit in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. and just to make sure too that people, because I think a lot of people, Dan, if they haven't been watching you right, like one of the key things is um, Susan, can you go to like the CSS title and name, or I'm sorry, oh, I'm the sorry actual, what? on what? the element, on, on the element, any one of these the hashtag, yeah. The hashtag. I gotta move. I gotta move. Oh, zoom okay. out of the way for them. Okay. Uh, so this is one thing here? in 2.0, right? That's like they made it a lot easier. Oh. There we go. There we go. So the CSS information, right? There's always this process of like clicking on the element, clicking on the hashtag, and then having to address here, knowing what the title and the selector is and copying it. One thing that I love in the 2.0 is that it's all right there on the screen and it's super easy to just grab and see. Um, that is oh yeah, like, so love. you're saying, okay, so here's our typical process when we're doing this. It's like, okay, I gotta go into CSS. I'm gonna drop my bit of code in that I want to be using because I am a copy paster. I don't have it in my head. So I just keep swipe files saved in my Google Drive of like, okay, this is my code for that. And um, so then I have to do that. But then I'm like, okay, now I have to go get my CSS ID. So now I gotta close this and I'm gonna have to go to my element and then I have to go over to here 
and it's like a lot of clicking and then I got to copy this then I got to go back to CSS and then yeah. find where that one was at paste that in there and uh I, it, what Andrea is saying is like um, I think it's showing up in the bottom now right like not uh, only is the data title you don't even have to click into CSS anymore yeah. it's all right there on the yeah. bottom everything so is there. amazing yeah like you don't have to do all this go everywhere thing well at the at the top of every element in 2.0 there's there's a little symbol up there it's little carrots mm -hmm. with a slash in the middle you mm -hmm. click on that it opens up the css for that element at the bottom of the page mm -hmm. so it's all right there on the same page and so in like, there is where you then have your unique identifier for that element and again in 2.0 they don't use they don't use um, IDs, they only use classes. So every single element on the page will be assigned its own unique class. So it essentially works exactly the same as an ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. You were yeah. saying like on, like where we get this little menu right. here on our element, there's right another there would button. Be the little, yeah. Yeah, and then it just opens it up as a strip along the bottom. Now, the only thing there is that if you want to give that element a, an attribute of any sort, like a data title, like we would do in 1.0, then you do have to go into the uh, sidebar editor, and then you got to go to advanced. And then in there, you can add a custom attribute. But the nice thing about that is it doesn't have to be a data title attribute. It could be any attribute that you wanted to put in there. I would guess even including a style attribute if you wanted to. So you could actually build inline CSS right there in that attribute. I haven't tested it yet. I just came, I just thought of that. Hmm. And I probably kind of lost you guys on that one. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting really, really geeky out. Um, I actually was um, <clears throat> a little distracted because I was thinking about buttons. I'm jumping ahead to buttons now because <laughs> I'm excited about the buttons in 2.0. Yes. Um, but are we ready to move on? Like, are we like those two things we've talked about? Everything. Now, is that is this that is a, all regular. in the upper right hand corner? That's just a logo, isn't it? Or is that is that <clears throat> this actual? This is just a logo. Okay, yeah, it's just a. a, a but image. again, it could with what we were just talking about there. It could be done with text. It could, yeah. If you had yep. those two fonts, yeah. Yep, you would just. Yeah, the only I don't know how you would accomplish this, but her <clears throat> her gold right here is like a textured gold. So well, I yeah, that's, know that's how true. You would do that. <laughs> so that quite that image. couldn't. Well, actually, no, that isn't true because you could use, you could actually make the color of any text. You could actually make it an image. So you could you could take text and you can make the background of the text an image, not the background of it, but the actual text elements, the letters themselves. Yeah. You could actually infill them with an image. That something I haven't done before. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, that's not something that can be done in 2.0. So 2.0 is going to give us a few, <coughs> a few of the minor things that are like the big headaches, which is uh, borders and shadows and, and stuff like that. But when we're getting into the, the real tricky stuff, like I just mentioned, that you can, you still can't do that. And it still has to be CSS. Yeah. Yeah. So like these things that we've talked about so far, you're still going to need to use CSS to do these. I haven't yeah. seen anything to show us otherwise. Um, and with but, your button down there with the yeah. fancy little, um, well, actually, it's, okay, it's must only that. Be, well, it's not moving on here because you're out, you got to be on the live page to have it moving. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The glitter. Yeah, because we it's can... using it's using what is known as a keyframe, and so how they build those normally. I mean, you got this from Justin, right? Yes. Shout out to Justin Cersei. This yeah, glimmer C code. style box. Yeah. Style box. Okay. See of style box. Yeah. Um, how they normally do that is you create a gradient that is like twice the width of the button. And then what it does is that whole gradient just moves back and forth. So that that shiny swoosh in the middle is just part of the gradient like this through the middle. And then this whole thing just moves back and forth on a on a set timer. And that's known as a keyframe. That's cool. I need to learn keyframes because everything I've been asking about lately, you're like, oh yeah, you just use a keyframe for that. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Oh no, it's really they're they're so cool to use for animations. They really. Yeah, will you have keyframes in your coding course? Oh, of course. Uh, I'm doing a plug for you. That was a t-ball. Come on, man. <laughs> Knock it out of the park. Yes. Um, I, yeah, haven't yeah, built, yeah, I, I haven't will. filmed that yet. 
Let me see. Here's just one of my many lists of things I still have to do for the cars. Um, uh, a few episodes back, we were going over Steve Larson's hub and Dan pointed out like this moving pig here is also using keyframes. Is that that was right, Dan? Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and all it does is so they got they got an image and it says as this keyframe is going along, you know, tilt it this way a little bit and then maybe pop it up a little bit and tilt it back this way. And so it just it looks like it's bebopping around, but it's just that it's just um, each keyframe says move it a little bit. Yeah. And because you do transitions between the keyframes, it will it'll move. It'll it, it won't just jerk there. It'll, you know, move slowly from one to the next over, you know, split second. Which is interesting because in 2.0, right, they're giving us a little bit more animation. Like we saw it on the Dan Kennedy funnel um, or the page, you know, that there's some animation. But it, again, it's mm -hmm. like if I really want to customize or control what that animation is doing instead of just like standard out of the box, you know, yeah, understanding that is important. What was Wait, that? that? What's that? That's not what I want. What's the site for Dan the Dan Kennedy offer? Um, I don't I was know. Just going to try to get to it from here. No BS. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me let me look it up here. Um, two, uh, yeah, it's not popping uh, up in my history. Um, uh, magnetic, yeah, magneticmarketing.com. Ah, oh, that's it. So in 1.0, we do have the ability in the settings to have images like moving in and out and doing all these kind of that that, that we just saw for him. No, it's not going to do it again. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's under animation, whether it's 2.0 yeah. or 1.0. Having these things slide in. So these things you can already do in 1.0. I just don't ever do it because it's just, mm -hmm. I just find it irritating. <laughs> yeah, it is. Especially yeah, when it only keeps case... repeating. The only case I did it um, years ago, I built a sales page, which I still use. And at the bottom, I had a bunch of testimonials. And so I just have them come. As you get to that part of the page, you always kind of go, pew, 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 pew. they all come in from different directions. That's the only case I've ever used it. That's cool because you want energy in that area. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm right. here, basically <laughs> here and on Russell's uh, hub page, basically every single element is moving and every single thing you hover over it's moving and expanding and and it's like okay guys that's just overkill <laughs> just too much <Yeah. laughs> someone really likes that feature um <clears throat> okay so buttons let's talk buttons for a little bit because they're giving us more options for buttons i think when i first got into funnel design one of the first things that I noticed and was like hearing from other people is like, oh, you got to use CSS for the button shadows because the the preloaded in options for button shadows are just horrible. Like that was I was hearing that all over the place. It was so like it was so random. Like that that was the thing people were focusing on. Um, so I this is the shadow is is CSS because I think what do they give us like five or six options in 1.0 to select yeah. from Which, something yeah. like that Which shadow are you referring to Actually, let me just talk about this the, the shadow there's, around the there's, button. A, oh, around there's the button. a very yeah. subtle shadow there oh got it okay it's there but it's subtle okay. um the glimmer is, is Cersei's, the, right the glimmer is Cersei's. yeah yeah i do that too uh i can just come in here and we can look at it but in box shadows oh it, yeah it, it has one selected but my css code is overriding it um mm -hmm. Okay, we have more than five or six, but I'm not gonna be able to show them. But those are the options. I don't like any of them. I don't I use part shadow them. a lot, but I don't love it. It's just if more I, of a mix. Yeah, if I have to, yeah, if I have to just throw something quick together, far shadow is probably the the one to pick, right? Um, mm -hmm. but in 2.0, I have it pulled up, so I'm gonna just describe it. We have the ability to. Mm -hmm select the blur that actually i could do this um because this is normally what i do is i do i do a search first actually i think i have it bookmarked box shadow generator mm -hmm. until dan showed me like oh you can just like do this in the inspect and just create your shadow and then put the code in there i'm like oh that's cool but this is typically what i do you can select your blur you can select your spread and the vertical and the horizontal so these all of these settings 
all of these settings plus your shadow color. And I'm looking to make sure there's nothing else. I think that's it. All of these are available in 2.0. So you will be able to, to create it to look any way that you want to in 2.0. And it's all right there in the settings, which is cool. So no more loading in code for your buttons. Like it's just, it's just there. Which is amazing. Yeah. Well, do you guys want to show the result of what we can do in 2.0? Sure. sure. Do you want to now share? Andrea should be sharing her screen now, right? I mean, if you're, if we're done with the other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We I'm can also kind yeah. of keeping an eye on the clock too. I'm making yeah. sure that we're going to the right thing. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do here is Andrea is going to show her screen because we can't show you behind the scenes. So all we can do, so Andrea, refresh your page. All we can do on here is show you uh, show you a live page. So Andrea has a live page and I have, I'm inside of the editor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some changes, tell you what those changes are, and then Andrea is gonna refresh her page. <laughs> so as they had talked about last week, there are, well, let's just, let's just take our border. So let's take a look at our image here first. So in the border image, you get, what is it? Three different borders you can preset in your theme. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what, what do they call that in general? What do they call that section in uh, where, you, where you set up all your stuff? The, sty the style, theme guide. style guide. Yeah, style guide. they're okay. using like three different words and I don't know what to call yeah. it. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. There is, depending on which button you're clicking on. Um, yeah. But yeah, so in the style guide, we'll call it that. Um, you can go in there and you can set up all your, your completely, your, your color palette, your fonts, all that kind of stuff. And so you set all your different colors. So inside of the style guide, Andrea went in and she set up her different uh, palette of colors for the borders. And so let's, I'm going to just turn on the border for the, uh, for the image. And so I just clicked on the first one. So Andrea, refresh your page. And so now what it's going to show you is the border around that image that was set as her image number one. And um, it's, it's not working. Did you reload? <laughs> I did. I yeah, wonder if I did it again. A minute. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Boom. <laughs> so, so that's one of them. And you see it matches all of her little swooshies all over the screen here. And so then all we have to do is just, so that was, uh, that was style number one. So now I switched it over to style number two. And it's saving. And so now <coughs> try to refresh and see what you come up with. And again, when you're saying switching, it's a click of a button. It's not code. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, because you've already set those colors as your border and the border width, mm -hmm. the whole thing there. Um, and I would guess the border shadow and all that too. I haven't looked at it for a little while. And yep. then of course we can go in here and we can click on her third one that she put in. And it will be yellow. Yeah. Kind of that yellowish, goldish color. But now that's not the only thing we can do. We can also come in and we can put in corners. So you can just click on, turn on the corners and I'm going to make it, um, well, in this case here, I got it 18. And so we can save that. And then we're going to get some corners on there when she refreshes. Love it. Cause we embrace curves and blobs. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that and you can do separate corners for each, each one too. So let me see here enabled. So I can make each one of these corners completely different. You get a really, yeah. really misshapen yeah. picture. Yeah. So give it a, give it a refresh there. To match so you can, those you can change all oh, independently. And um, so, I mean, we start to get into all kinds of cool stuff here then. And then let me see those borders and then we can put a shadow around it. And again, she had three preset shadows in here. So let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. And so refresh it, Andrea. Okay. So now we got a that's preset set shadow number one. I'll just click on number three. Look how cool that is! Right one click of a button, no CSS code, amazing. Yep. And so give it another try. I want to point out load. something too that I think we might all be forgetting. This is all being applied to an image element, right? Our current options, like this may seem, I think it gets forgotten because we can already put borders on things. Like there's border yeah. options in the settings. We can put shadows on things. But in the images for 
our options for shadows are three options. Our options for border are, do you want a white thumbnail border or do you want a dark thumbnail border? Like those are the options for border. You can't choose your colors for images, which is really strange. And for radius, you can't make, you can either do a circle or you can do rounded corners. Mm -hmm. And so like we're very limited on what we can actually do on images in 1.0, which has always boggled my mind. Like, why can I select borders for my columns and my rows and everything but i can't select the color for my image <laughs> right right it doesn't make any sense all right and you reload it one more time okay cool yellow glowy shadow really on fire <laughs> okay so now what i did is i went into the text element to the top left and i said i want my bold in there to be red and so if you refresh that'll now be red that is not inside the brand guide <laughs> and then let's say we want to put in a link so the top part's going to be a link and i will make that go to google.com and so then we can come in and we can set the link color as well okay it automatically set that to blue i'm going to change that to let's make it a greenish color i don't know why it would but i did and so if you save that now you're going to see that the large call to action is now green, but it's also a clickable link. If you go hover over it, it should, yeah, so now it becomes clickable. And as uh, uh, Susan was saying earlier, she wants her uh, clickable links to always have an underline on them. <laughs> so we will. That was, that was off, off recording. So <laughs> save, context, say that. Yes. Now re refresh it, Andrea, and links now we'll have an underline, underline <laughs> underneath it. Just make sure that whenever you're putting in a hyperlink, you put in the hyperlink first, and then you apply any of the decoration to it, the underline, the italics, that kind of stuff, because it'll get wiped out normally when you turn it into a hyperlink. Oh, and pro tip for all you 1.0ers out there, because I know it's enough to drive me crazy, but if hyperlinks are not, you can only do one manipulation of one hyperlink inside one text element at a given time. So you have to do the hyperlink, click out of it, save it, click back into it, then do the second hyperlink, click out of it, save it, then do the third hyperlink. You can't do it all in one. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That may be, I, I've probably never tried to put two links Ooh, yes. in a text. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then let's just take a look at the button here real quick. Same thing as before, um, button action. Okay, yeah, so you got your same button actions as you would before. You can submit the form, you can open the pop-up, you can do all that kind of stuff. I can change the size of it if I wanted to, but let me see what I'm looking for here. Um, okay, so we got button style. So I'll click on one of Andrea's pre-made button styles. We can put in an icon before it and an icon after it. And how come I'm not seeing, oh, I see, we got the override. Uh, let me see here, the typography. For the presets, you've got like where it says style and it says one, two, three, and then yeah. right above the override. So if you're trying yeah. to select one of her presets. Corners. Okay, for some reason the border is not Oh, you have to, is it grayed out for you? Um, border's not working at all on the button. Huh. Do you have it enabled? There's like yeah, a little got, slider next to it. Yeah, there... yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it turned on. Um, yeah, so the border's not working. Well, let's save it and let's see if it works, uh, comes up on the live. All right, so refresh your page, Andrea. So, yeah, so a lot of the stuff that should have been built into 1.0 and, and, you know, some of the guys have tried to build, huh, it's not, it's not working either. Let me save it again. Let me pop out of here. Nope. It's definitely saved. Um, so, increase your stroke you size for your border. Yeah. It's up to 20. Oh. Yeah. So it should be huge and it's not showing anything over here either. Let me go back in. Um, but again, that's that's part of the problem is there's still plenty, plenty of glitches inside of uh, 2.0. No yeah, doubt about mine, that. Mine's working in the editor for mine. I haven't tried saving it and looking at it, well, but it's working. We got four months though, right? Four months to funnel hacking live. 
<laughs> I think like pressured really on. <laughs> well, at this point here, I, I, who knows, um, yeah. who knows what, what or when I'm, um, I'm certainly not spending a whole lot of time on 2.0 at this point, just because it's just, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, yeah. um, that's why I'm working on my other stuff. And, uh, you know, so a lot of a lot of what I have in my other training will cover this and it'll cover stuff that ClickFunnels 2.0 will now have built in, but it's also a thousand times beyond all that too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I think Dan too, I mean, one of the biggest things that I got just in taking your courses or, or working with you is the more that I understand the elements inside of ClickFunnels and just what's happening behind the scenes, the more creativity I can tap into in terms of what's possible, right? right? So, but it's like, I almost need to understand and appreciate that those technology, the architecture of it, you know, in order to do the things that I want to do, so. Well, yeah, and the, I've, I, I gotta be honest with you, I've learned so much over the last couple of months as I've been starting to film this class, like the whole idea with doing the strike through and then using it to change the color. I knew that it worked, I didn't know why. Yeah. Now I know why it works. Yeah. And because of that, you're right. I can then take that to other elements and do other things that you couldn't do otherwise. Refresh your page because I got the and I've seen I got it the border to I got the border to actually work on a different button I put in. Nice. So that was one of your pre-built buttons that I just kind of made the corners rounder and made the border bigger. I was gonna say that is not one of my pre-built ones. <laughs> that, that, looks like that, <laughs> that looks like that hideous color palette that you're using on that thing there. Yeah. <laughs> not that I said that out loud or anything. It's all right. It's all right. right. <laughs> I'll kill you later. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so I think to sum sum it all up, <clears throat> there's gonna be definitely things that you're still gonna need to use code for. Some CSS code to stylize your pages to make them if you want them fully branded to what you have going on and whatever your brand style guide is chances are you created something that isn't going to be simple to do in the click funnel settings 1.0 or 2.0 but 2.0 is going to be like they're they're working on it they already have in there loaded in a lot of new capabilities to for design and we can see that they're trying to add in some more um yeah. the custom font ability we're hoping is going to be a little bit simpler and yeah so i think that it's going to be easier for a lot of people to have that consistent branded funnel i think that like oh, yeah. i feel like no, after 2.0 is fully out gone at least i feel like it should be this way gone are going to be the days of just just funnel templates that are just like out of the box you know like when you just go and visit somebody's funnel and you're like oh they clearly yeah. just grabbed one of the templates and they yeah. didn't even change anything to even try to make it look like their own yeah i think that there's gonna i'm, I'm sure there's still gonna be people that are doing that but i think like there's no more excuses <laughs> like yeah. after 2.0 well, like I, you should so be branding of... your stuff to you yeah, yeah. So, so many of these design gurus out there they you, you they go okay we're going to give you this you know pack of 20 templates and you look at them they're all the same i know and they all I look like each it. other's look like because they're all building a figma or something like that and they all look exactly the same and the other thing with most of them is it's all images yeah there's no actual building a funnel there's no putting in the text elements and putting in the background Please. elements and doing all that they're building basically a, a photoshop image putting it onto a page and going here here i just built you a funnel Yep. No, you didn't. You built me a Photoshop page is what you built me with a button in it. <laughs> That's what I got. Um, and so yeah. obviously you could tell I'm not a huge fan of those guys. But yeah. Andrea, reload your page because we were talking a minute ago about uh, animations. And you'll see that button. If I did it right, it should come flying up from the bottom. The So you got to reload your page. Hello, Andrea. I've reloaded it three times. Really? Oh, yeah. we haven't seen your mouse moving at all on. Yeah, your I didn't screen. see oh, there anything. We go. Okay, huh. so I... well, that animation didn't work. It was supposed to hmm. bounce in coming up from the bottom, but um, well, at least I thought it was supposed to. 
<laughs> That's what I set it to. It says bounce in on page load from the bottom. Um, I'll Is make... it from the bottom of the section or the bottom of the page? Um, well, it said bottom. Uh, so I guess looks well, like it is coming up, but I'm gonna guess it's all right. Well, let me change. Let me change the animation. It, it looks like it's just popping, like popping like in, pop. like okay. loading in. I don't Let's see try this one. Upward. Fold fold in should give us something, and I slowed down the animation speed on it too. Mm, it's doing something different. <laughs> now well, it looks like it's popping up from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is kind of doing something. Uh, oh, there, there it goes. Go. There it goes. Now it's obvious. Okay, wait. Yeah, okay, it's holding up. Go. Okay, now it I, just now needed I to slowed catch it up. Down to, I slowed it down to two seconds even. So, okay, so now it's folding up. Okay. So, so it's just too fast. <laughs> but see, we have control over those things now. We didn't have, we don't have those kind of settings in 1.0. Mm -hmm. There's some button animations, but it's just choose your animation. Yeah, there's no. But I think or... I think part of this is now people are going to see this and then they're going to go, oh, well, that's cool. Can I also do this? Mm -hmm. And then again, you're back to getting into the custom CSS. And in many cases here, see, we never even talk about custom JavaScript because mm -hmm. you want to start doing the really, really cool stuff. That's when you need JavaScript on top of it, like any of the stuff that we build for the membership sites that 95 percent of that is javascript it's not necessarily the css yeah when you start moving entire sections around on the page and animating things and hiding them and showing them um, that all takes javascript and that's that's one more level up but of course are we going to be able be to learn friend. javascript in your course that you have coming up <clears throat> are, are you going to learn javascript i don't know about you <laughs> but uh, I think many of my students will learn JavaScript in my course coming up here. Yes. I believe in me. I believe in me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to correct something that I said earlier. Cause I was, just, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I think we can do this. We do have control over speed of animations in 1.0. Um, but we don't have many options as far as like what type of animation we have fade in fade in with scale. And that's the only options for, well, yeah, you, but you can also have them, you can have them slide in from the top, bottom, left and right. And I think that's about it. Mm. I, well, I know you can't. I'm not seeing that on the image element, but maybe um, I just have fade in, fade in with scale as my options that are showing up. And then on page load or on page scroll. Well, yeah, click on on page load, then you can do fade in, fade in. Oh, yeah, you're right. Left, right you're top, right. Bottom. And then okay. you have your delay. The delays. See, there, there you have your delay speed but you don't have the speed of the animation. Whereas in 2.0, you have the delay and the speed. So again, on 1.0, if you wanted to change the speed of the animation, you have to go in with some CSS and then tell it what speed you want to run at. But again, that's one line of yeah. CSS. So you can, you can Google that, find it, put in your CSS and you changed it. And that's, yeah. that's the, that's really the thing that I'm really stressing in my, when, in my teaching is learn the words, learn the concepts, because once you do that, once you understand how this works in general, you can Google it and find the answer. Because everything I'm teaching in my course is online somewhere. It's just when I got started at this, that was the hardest thing I had is I didn't know what words to use. So I didn't know how to ask the question. Now that I learn, know the words, I can type something in, boom, there it is. I see how somebody else did it who is much smarter than me. I figure it out. I put it into CSS. All right, not, I put it into CF, ClickFunnels, because yeah. that's the thing is you have to take what you're seeing out there in the real world, and then you have to modify it and get it to work within the structure of ClickFunnels. That's the, that's the other trick at the end of it. But once you learn the structure of ClickFunnels, then you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. yep. all right let's leave it at that <laughs> all right everybody thank you for watching live or replay and let, let us know what else you'd like to see in the future otherwise we will be back next friday with some more stuff um and we'll see if we have anything new in i think we're gonna try to dive into maybe see if anything has changed in the blogging area by then i think none of us have really messed with that lately so we'll see um, okay, so, we'll so see you guys next you're, Friday. You're going to torture us with the blogs. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the only thing. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of where else could they be making improvements right now. And <laughs> that's the one that needs the most help. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you, everybody.